In cities across America, a hidden crisis exists, the terrible crime of human sex trafficking. Yes, right here in the United States, thousands of cases are reported each year. It's a complex and difficult issue to talk about, but today on this special edition of The Balancing Act, we will give you the facts about human sex trafficking. We'll speak with experts and learn about companies like UPS who are working to combat this problem. We'll also meet with an organization called Wellspring Living, whose mission is to transform the lives of those at risk or victimized by sexual exploitation. We begin here in Atlanta at the UPS headquarters where we confront the issue of human sex trafficking and learn how UPS is making a difference. I sat down with two local experts, the Attorney General of Georgia, Chris M. Carr, and the President of Social Impact and the UPS Foundation, Nikki Clifton, and they shared their insight. Thank you so much for sitting down to talk with me. I know that you both have worked together. You've worked on this issue separately. A lot of people hear about this issue, but I don't think that they know or understand how widespread this actually is and how many people it affects. Talk to me about the issue itself and how much it impacts our communities. That's right, the data is really hard to come by, but what we know is that human trafficking is a multi, multi-billion dollar enterprise more money than guns and drugs combined. And what really set with me was when I was sitting with a survivor and talking to her. She was a young girl, 16 years old in DC, and she told me that her trafficker said, I stopped selling drugs because I can sell a girl multiple times a day. So when you think about the business model and the criminal enterprise around this business model, you can't unsee the responsibility that we have as corporate leaders, as public servants, to do something about it. I'm a mom, Chris is a dad, and I think at the end of the day, when we think about the safety and security of our communities, we know we can make a difference. And I wanted to follow up on that because Nikki is, in, in a, is at the center of what, when you're trying to combat human trafficking, there are a number of different ways you do it. One is training and education. UPS and Truckers Against Trafficking, right at the center of it. Think about it, UPS is in every neighborhood around the world, every neighborhood around the world. So when you're talking about education and providing tips to law enforcement, and I've said it is far better for you to see something that doesn't look right, tell law enforcement and be wrong than to let one more child be abused. Second is legislation. Again, the partnerships that here you have a great corporate citizen in the state of Georgia working with us on all the legislation that we've passed, again, to try to, pr to protect survivors, to protect our most vulnerable. That's the way that you do it uh, there as well. Now, I know there are several programs that you have initiated within UPS. Tell me about some of the specific programs that you've initiated. What we've done from the, from the side of corporations and from UPS is said, we've got more than 100,000 drivers that are on the street. We can train them to be aware. And they are naturally servant leaders. They are naturally very community oriented. Many of them are fathers and mothers. And so they care about the communities where they work and they live. And so when you ask them to be on the lookout and you show them what it looks like and ask them to put the anti-human trafficking hotline phone number in their, in their uh, cell phone and make a call if they see something, that's the first step from an awareness standpoint. Then we've also invested in nonprofits that are committed to, um, to disrupting these networks and to supporting survivors. And so through the education and the training, the investment in nonprofits, and then creating support for policymakers like General Carr to, to help us on the legislative front and on the prosecution front, that's the ecosystem. If you could send a message to people who are out there who um, maybe don't want to think about this issue because it is such a heartbreaking issue, really focus in for our viewers on the human aspect of this. There are human beings behind every single one of these transactions and how we have to think of this in an emotional, very human, very real way. These folks are selling human beings multiple times per day. A lot of our victims have been sold five and 10 times per day. I've said the thing that drives me most, think about the fear the fear. 
And if that were my child or if that were me, I'd hope to God somebody would come and help. And here you have a lot of somebodies because if you train, the more eyes we have on the program, uh, on the issue, the more success that we're gonna have. I appreciate so much the time that you took today to sit down with me to educate us on this issue and to let us know what you all are doing together as a team, with what UPS is doing. Thank you so much for your time and for your insight. You're it's our welcome. pleasure. Thank you. And when we come back, we'll talk more about what the employees at UPS are doing to make a difference. Welcome back to this special edition of the Balancing Act. Now to learn more about how UPS is helping address the issue of human sex trafficking here in America, I met with Kathy Scott, the Vice President of Social Impact and the UPS Foundation. Kathy, thank you so much for your time today. We were talking earlier um, about what UPS does as a company, but all of the employees really seemed to be involved in this issue as well. Talk to me about what the employees are doing and why it is so important for them to be involved too. Absolutely, well listen, service is in our DNA and we're really proud of that and you can see that through the beautiful quilt of our UPSers and how they're giving back. They are so generous with their time and their donations. We are volunteering nearly two million hours a year across the globe, right in our communities where our employees are working and where they're living. Over the last five years, our UPSers have donated nearly $8 million just for the cause of human trafficking. So they're really connecting. Um, they are, in many ways, could be impacted, and they're finding ways to connect locally to causes that they really care about that are really bringing and creating awareness um, around these issues. Why do you think that each individual employee is able to make such an impact? So I've got a great example of that. Our drivers, they're in every single neighborhood and we've provided, UPS has provided tools and resources that they have at their fingertips. We've had drivers that have actually reported and been able to save lives. We have drivers that are using the lifeline cards that when they're traveling and they're driving down the highways, that they are putting them in the different gas stations. Um, they are putting them in the DOT stops. And we're finding that that's been really impactful and what an opportunity for these drivers to have the tools they need to save a life. Now we actually had the opportunity to talk with one of the drivers. Let's actually take a listen to how he has been able to make a difference. My name is Steven Ozenbaugh. I've been with UPS for 20 years and I'm a feeder driver out of Los Angeles, California. UPS is a corporate sponsor of Truckers Against Trafficking and basically they're involved by getting their drivers educated and certified to bring this awareness around the world. My involvement with Truckers Against Trafficking has been going on for about two years. I've been able to distribute 400 wallet cards across 17 states to 383 different truck stops and 18 UPS facilities. I feel that I've made a big impact so far, but there's so much more to do. And I just look forward to the journey in front of me and hopefully getting as many people here, not only aware of what's going on, but get them certified to help them see the signs that are going on around the world. For UPS to allow us as drivers to use the UPS platform to spread awareness about human trafficking and giving us the opportunity to leave lifelines around the country, it's amazing. 
Just watching that, it really is incredible what one person can do to make a difference. But the really, the really amazing thing that I love about UPS is it's the UPS Foundation is actually helping on a corporate level as well. So we're really excited. Um, if you can think about if one person's making an impact, can you think collectively if we all come together? And we are partnering with an organization here in Atlanta. You know, Atlanta is a major hub uh, for human trafficking, and this organization is Wellspring Living and they are providing life-changing resources um, for people that have been trafficked. And they are providing job readiness, they are providing career readiness, and holistic wraparound services so that these survivors can really thrive. And UPS is really um, proud uh, to sponsor their Welcome Home campaign. And our employees are also rallying around volunteering. We have mentors. We have folks that are sitting, UPSers that are sitting on their board to help build the capacity of Wellspring Living. Very well said. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Now, when we come back, we will learn more about how Wellspring Living is helping survivors and meet some of the remarkable women there. As devastating as human sex trafficking is, there is hope for survivors. Wellspring Living has been helping survivors of human sex trafficking for more than 22 years. It is a safe haven where women can begin the process of rebuilding their lives and recovering from trauma. And it takes a special kind of focus to help these women. And for Andrea Hipwell, the director of post-program support and a staff member at Wellspring Living for nearly 15 years, it's also extremely personal. First of all, Andrea, thank you so much for your time today and your willingness to share your story. You work here at Wellspring Living, but you have an incredibly unique perspective. Do you mind sharing your story? Hmm. Well, I do have a, a definitely a unique perspective. Um, I actually came to Wellspring Living at first as a participant in the Women's Residential Program. And um, I was in the life for, we call it the life, um, I was in the life for a little over 10 years. Um, and by the time that I got to the end of that, um, I was so angry and um, lonely and felt so unworthy of so many things. But I, I actually lived in this house for 10 months and participated in the program. I received therapy. Um, I received unconditional love and support from the staff. Um, I tell people a lot that they loved me when I was unable to love myself. And until I was able to start to love myself again, um, and so it's definitely a unique perspective that not a lot of our staff have, but I'm so honored to um, be able to have that point of view. What's really special is that you have taken everything that you've learned and you've turned that into unconditional love for other people who don't know unconditional love yet. So from that perspective, how could you help make others out there who might be watching right now understand this problem? So I think the, the one thing that I would want people to know is that, um, yes, there are signs of trafficking. Yes, there are red flags for people to look out for, but there's also a lot of things that, that people don't see. Trafficking is likely happening next door to your house. Trafficking is likely happening in your neighborhood. Um, trafficking is not an other country problem. Trafficking happens right here. And so I think just, um, you know, being aware, um, getting involved with places like Wellspring that, that have served hundreds and hundreds of survivors and, and know that trafficking looks 
very different to very different people. My name is Christian Murphy and I'm the CEO of Wellspring Living. Since we've started Wellspring Living, we have served more than 2,400 individual women and children. And that's not counting the children of the women that we've served or the children's children. So when I think about the impact of Wellspring, I think about generational impact. I think about changing a family's lives for the better forever. And I really think about helping them to build the, a different legacy than they would have otherwise been able to have. It's not only about saving lives, but it's really about touching the community in a more powerful way than maybe we'll ever be able to fully understand. Why is it so important to have a place like this, like Wellspring Living? Yeah, it's so important to have a, pl a safe place to heal. A lot of survivors um, haven't had a lot of, lot of safe places in their lives. And so having a place like this physically, but also having a staff that's trained to um, understand trauma, to understand the after effects of being in the life, to understand what some of those behaviors look like, to understand um, it's okay not to be okay, and that this is a place that it's okay not to be okay. I'm Dr. Alyssa Tertichny, and I'm the Chief Program Officer at Wellspring Living. There's so many stories that we have the honor of holding as an organization of, of women and youth who we've gotten to see become confident in who they are, to live out their dreams, to be successful, and certainly not every story is like that. And for some of our folks, this opportunity to heal and have a safe place and be seen is that launch pad for their future. And to be clear, Wellspring doesn't, we don't do the work for our participants, they do the work. They are absolutely the heroes in this story. We just have the incredible honor to walk alongside them. And so that's really our role is to hold that container for the healing to happen and get out of our participants' way so that they can be who they are and heal and do their thing. And so that's that's our joy. I mean, that was the start of me sitting here right now. I now serve as a director in the program, but having an organization that um, will hire you and train you and um, continue to put you um, in places where you can learn and grow and develop. UPS definitely is a huge partner for, for us. The sky's the limit and, and I don't know if there's gonna be time for me to talk to somebody that might be watching this that may be experiencing um, trafficking today, <laughs> but um, there's so much hope. And when I was in that space, I, th I thought that was just gonna be where I was gonna be for the rest of my life. I say all that to say there is so much hope for whoever's listening today, for whoever's watching this today. There is a way out. There is life beyond the life and beyond trafficking. Um, some of the ladies that, all the ladies that I work with are the most brave, courageous women. Um, they can do anything. Well, let me say to you that you are brave and courageous, and I so appreciate your vulnerability today, um, so thank you. And you just heard Andrea say it, hope. There is hope, and when we come back, the hope behind this crisis. Stay with us. Welcome back. Combating the ugliness that is human sex trafficking and the damage that it can inflict does take effort, but it is clear that we can all make a difference. If we think about what one person can do, can you imagine how many companies can collectively come together to make a real impact? And that's where UPS is really best positioned. Our voice is being heard and we are bringing um, people to the table with us. My encouragement is that there is hope in this work. So there's nothing too small that someone can do to be a part of, of the solution for this. I see a little bit of myself in every single woman that comes through the door. And I know what my life is like now. And I want every one of them to be able to experience the hope and the joy and the full life that I get to experience now. 
To learn more about the UPS Foundation and other UPS initiatives, go to about.ups.com. And to learn more about Wellspring Living, you can go to wellspringliving.org. Also, be sure to download the Be Strong app or go to bestrong.org to learn more. And as always, you can visit thebalancingact.com. And coming soon, a special episode of our sister show, Designing Spaces of Hope, as the UPS Foundation and others help to transform the Wellspring Living Home. I'm Beth Troutman. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.